it won't buffer this time. That was kind of ridiculous. Is that Tuesday? I moved to Tuesday last week, didn't I? All right, I'm just tuning up, always tune. Somebody asked me uh, about the tuning of some instrument. Oh, I, somebody asked me on my standard tuning thing when you change strings, do you have to re-intonate when you um, go with like a super big difference in strings, if you put baritone strings or something. And I, um, if you were to play it live, I would definitely, if it was going to be set up that way, like you went from a regular set, like I did on my uh, Paul Reed Smith, I put, I went from a regular set to a uh, baritone set so I could tune down to open C and C standard. Just have a guitar, electric guitar tune that way. Hey, everyone. Um, and uh, um, and because I don't play it live, I didn't get it intonated. I could intonate it myself. That's not really that difficult. But um, I didn't um, make do that because when I'm using it, I'm in the studio. And in the studio, I wonder if I should turn off this overhead light. Yeah, that's better. Um, in the studio, there's now any more light from over here. I can't figure it out. Um, in the studio, I can, what, I can do what's called tempered tuning. Uh, basically, uh, or that's what I call it. It's probably not that. Hey, Holly, long time no see. Um, if I'm if I'm playing down here, I just tune make sure it's in tune here. And then if I'm playing up here, I try to make sure that it's in tune, you know, everything's in tune here with all tuned to the tuner. You go, okay, that D's a little flat there. So, you know, so I'll tune where I'm playing at that moment. And then when I'm going to do another punch in or another layer of a track or something like that, if I go up here, then I'm gonna I'm gonna check all the tune in there so that I try to keep it. Um, uh, so it's into even a, an intonated guitar is going to have some maybe discrepancies from open position to like 17th fret or something like that. So you might even have to tune there. Now, if I'm playing live, you just kind of get it in the neighborhood and you and you uh, you intonate it the best you can. But um, it's not perfect. Oh, mystery song number three. Sorry, let me change that. And we are on acoustic again. And uh, one clue, um, I didn't know this, but technically this one was played on 12 string as well. Um, and, um, and then also nylon, so two guitars on this one. Um, but, and I think they're basically playing the same thing. But it is two different guitar players playing it. So I'm, I'm, I'm dropping little clues as I go here. Hey, Michael, how's it going? Michael Lynn Music. Long time no see. S Sam. Pretty good Super Bowl yesterday. I mean, of course, <laughs> as an, I, I, I'm not. Here's the problem with the LA Rams and fans, Ram, LA Rams fans. <laughs> is uh, we didn't have a team. Second largest market in the country, we didn't have a team for 19 years. So people found other allegiances. You know, that's why at the, at the 49ers game, there were more 49er fans there than Ram fans. It sounded like a 49ers home game. Um, it's even worse for the, for, the clip, or for the Chargers. When the Chargers play, uh, they have to play the, the Raiders twice every year. <laughs> there are more Raiders fans in LA than anything. It's hilarious. Um, so, uh, it, where, um, you know, and I've been to a bunch of sporting events in LA, not, I don't really care to go to them. I don't, not a big fan. Sometimes somebody gives me tickets or asks me to go. I can't think of any time I've actually, okay. When the Redskins played the, uh, when the Redskins played the Raiders in like, at the Coliseum in like 87 or something, I bought tickets. I remember getting horribly sunburned and I was in like at the top at the end zone. It was awful. It was kind of one of those times where you go, yeah, much, 
I would have, would, have, would have rather watched it on TV. Would have been much more enjoyable. My, you know, my the Redskins were my team growing up. Um, I lived in Indianapolis, and uh, and then as soon as I moved to California, the Colts moved to Indianapolis. So when I would go home, my stepdad had tickets, and so we would usually go to one game a year. You know, he would, you know, I would be there for one game. Hey, Lena, good to see you. Um, we're gonna today. We're gonna work on some strumming. We're gonna be strumming in six eight. That's another clue. Uh, but a pretty simple pattern. Hopefully, you can get this down. I'll I'll try to work. We'll work that first, and then we'll start working the song. And I did a little research on the song. I think I got the chords right. How they were played. Um, <clears throat> and we'll see. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. That's right. My Valentine is not here. She's back home visiting her mother. And we never celebrate Valentine's Day because our second son, Jack, was born on Valentine's Day. So we always celebrated his birthday. So I got out of that. <laughs> My wife doesn't care about Hallmark holidays anyway. She hates them. You know, she doesn't even, doesn't even care about birthdays. Yeah, she's like... Um, the... Um, um, but the, the, you go to a Dodger game and there, there's Dodger, like it's a lot of Dodger fans. The only time you might have a lot of other team fans when they play the Giants, the Cubbies, when the Cubbies are in town, there's always a lot of Chicago fans <laughs> see that game. And I like going to Dodger games. Usually I have pretty good seats for that. I have friends that have good seats. Um, and then also when the Mets play, I remember I took my dad to see the, the Dodgers and um, they were playing the Mets and we were kind of got stuck. I, my dad is afraid of heights, so we couldn't be in any of the levels. We, I, we were overpassed like by the foul pole uh, on the first baseline, uh, you know, and uh, we were with a bunch of <laughs> Mets fans and they just got drunk. Like they were drunk by the third inning. I mean, it was always, and then this one girl turns around and flashes the whole crowd She's like up in the front. She's she was flashing the players or something, and then she turned around and flashed us, and then they carted her off. I'm like, stay classy, New York. <laughs> um, so, uh, so but the Dodgers, you know, LA is big Dodgers. They they really support the Dodgers. They also really support the Lakers, even when the Lakers are awful. They still love the Lakers because both those teams have won lots of championships. I mean, the Lakers, I think, have if you include the Milwaukee, Minneapolis. Minnesota, Minneapolis Lakers. What were they before? Milwaukee? Somebody will know. Um, and I think between they have 17 championships or something like that. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate that. <clears throat> um, uh, they, they have yeah, 17 championships, and the Dodgers have like six or something. So, you know, the Rams, there's no L.A. football team that's ever won a Super Bowl. So this is, this is big for... Hopefully, you'll have a lot more L.A. fans. You know, <laughs> those kind of fans, right? Uh, but you build on that. Um, it's like, it's like I, I can't tell you how many friends I have that's never lived anywhere near Pittsburgh, but they're Steeler fans. Because when they grew up, Steelers were like the best team. So I want to root for the best team. Cowboy fans, same thing. So anyway, enough talk about football. Sorry about that. But it was a great day for L.A. sports, so we'll, we'll hopefully, um, I'd love to go see that stadium at some point. Might be make more sense to go to a, a Chargers game, and I, I, I like the Chargers. I, I think they're, you know, I like their quarterback, and Cooper Cup deserved the MVP. He got hammered on that last drive twice. He got, was it the last drive or the last two drives he got? He got the helmet to helmet thing. I mean, I'm surprised he got up from that, or they didn't force him to go in the tent. They, the refs did a great job of not really calling much. Although the one touchdown by Cincinnati was had a face mask that they should have called, but they didn't. Anyway, am I frozen? Uh oh. Minneapolis Lakers. Thank you, Sam. I knew Sam would know. Wish you were here. No, that's a great one though, Renee. Um, it, it's a it's a bit riffy for doing this. If I was sitting in a room teaching you a lesson, we could totally learn that song. But over the internet, I, I'm kind of a little bit more forced to kind of just show you chords and try to get you to play the song, okay? Uh, I think I have next week's song. It's one of two songs. It's going to be an electric song. Um, so it's got bar chords in it. Um, 
if we do it. So bar, bar chords and power chords. So that's a little bit of a clue, but not much. Okay. All right. So another clue, we're for the most part in the key of G on this one. Okay. And we're going to play G old school. Uh, the way I learned G, I think the first time was probably this. Right? Uh, first finger on the B, second fret of the fifth string. And your second finger was on the bottom string at the third fret, playing a G note. And then you had three open strings, and then you had that. Now, I almost always play G this way. Um, and I did some research, tried to find some players. Like, I was watching Dylan, because uh, I was wanting to do another one of those strumming pattern videos. Like, what, does Dylan have a favorite strumming pattern? I didn't really notice anything. Um, maybe Johnny Cash, I, you know. But I was watching the videos, and so... I was seeing like this chord in the 60s, but this one actually appeared too. I thought this was more like a more recent invention. Of course, obviously somebody could have played it in the 1900s. Um, but, th but this is not the one we're going to play. And actually, this is not the one we're going to play. Because we're going to be moving our fingers around. And I watched a video where I actually saw... Okay, here's another clue. Okay, we got a lot of clues here. Okay, 12 string and nylon. <clears throat> Yes, that was in the uh, Barry uh, uh, Steve. That was in the that was in the Super Bowl. Um, it was the, the game I saw because, and that actually happened at the Rose Bowl. So I was watching that game, literally, just a mile away from because <laughs> I lived in Pasadena, right, pretty close to the Rose Bowl. Um, so I was watching that game, and I, the blimp was flying overhead and all that. So I could see all that and hear all that. Yeah, you know, I couldn't hear the crowd. Uh, it's too, that was too far away. Uh, I went to a preseason game, so it was like August, and I just got I just got cooked. Um, I just got cooked out there. I was so ripped, sunburned. Enter, enter. Oh, you yeah, entered a giveaway. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I want to talk about that too. Doing a giveaway. I, I'd like to do. I got stuff to give away. I, I have actually some stuff to give away, but I'm like, I I don't want to be stuck. Although now I think it's getting cheaper now to ship overseas, but I, I think I think it was Madagascar or something that was a winner, and I had to send a box of like a forty dollar box of strings to Madagascar, and that cost me like eighty five dollars. <laughs> it's just like dang it. Um, so you know maybe I don't know. We'll see what happens. But some a, a couple of vendors sent me some stuff to give away, and I just never did. So. Um, so a manufacturer or something. Um, so the clue so far: twelve string nylon, uh, two two different guitar players, key of G, old school G style, six eight. Oh, you should have this. This should be getting. Oh, my son actually. Um, so my son got an email from someone saying they were giving away a piano, and they got their name from you know. And he replied, it was like. It was a nice piano, <clears throat> and it was a scam. They wanted uh, they wanted the uh, shipping. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll just uh, send us it, it, the shipping. Will cost you know three. We'll we'll get it to you at three hundred fifty dollars. Whatever. No, we wanted to go see the piano, and they were like, no, you know, <laughs> it's a total scam. So, or some no name. No, that's almost too easy, Steve. <clears throat> this song has uh, is uh, okay. It's also A A B A. Old school, that also is a kind of a giveaway. But anyway, okay. So what I want to do is we're, we're going to practice the 6-8 pattern. And I have it right here. Let me see if I can just, if I copy this. Can I copy and paste? I cannot. Okay, so can I drag this? I think I can drag it. Right? Yeah. Okay. So here's our little pattern. Um, and it, it, you can you can kind of fudge from this a little bit. You can play less. You could play all six eight, uh, sixteenth notes. But this pattern basically with G is okay. okay now that should give it away because um, I'm playing in the actual key. Oh, we only have twenty one people watching. Come on, people! All right. So I'm going one, two, and three, and two, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. So 
If we play <clears throat> just the eighth notes, it would all be down strokes. One, two, three, four, five, six is one way to count it. Do that with me. Yeah, you haven't missed anything. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. <laughs> oh, then you know what's going to happen. <laughs> Catherine's got me on the big screen trying to scare her. Um, skiing, I'm jealous. I, I don't even know how to ski. I've never gone skiing. I don't want to break anything. I can't break my arm. I need to work. Four, five, six. Okay. Now, if we were to subdivide that into sixteenth notes, one and two and three and two and two, you know, three. Uh, we get one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two. It's kind of hard to say. One, two, two, one, two. So 6A is what's called a triple-duple or a duple-triple, I'm not sure. Uh, but basically, you can count it in two, you can count it in three. Um, you can count one, two, three, two, two, three. You can go one, two, and just kind of feel it in between. I, you know, that's kind of, when, when, you're, <clears throat> when you're doing, um, oh, yeah, where's Bruce? Oh, Bruce is there. Okay, sorry. Dennis is there. Okay, everybody's here. Um, I mean, all the moderators are here. But, you know, it's kind of like this. You can imagine having a beer stein and, you know, bashing two beer steins together. And this is another one of those songs that I played wrong for years. Um, and so when I did a little deeper dive in it this week, um, I realized, oh, you know. And then I watched, I saw a video where you can kind of see uh, one of the players playing it. Where did you go skiing, John? I mean, I know where Catherine's, Catherine's around a lot of uh, uh, big mountains, but, but John, <laughs> you're in Louisville. <laughs> I remember my friends would drive up to Michigan to go skiing and it was like 800 foot hill or something like that. It's like, oh my gosh. Okay. I don't know the. Okay, so uh, let's see. Can I give any more clues before? Okay, so this is for the most part G, but there's a where we go outside the key. All right. So uh, I'm going to. Uh, okay, wait. A minute. Let's just practice this rhythm a little bit more. We're going to do this rhythm. All right. So what this is is one, two, and three. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Try to play it like this too, the G chord. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Holly. Down, down, up, down. So the tempo is broken. Okay. All right. I'm going to do that right now. I'm grabbing the Discord link. Edit. Let's see. Here it is. Copy. Cancel. Yeah. Oh, and it's good because I'm going to drag uh, some... Uh, I mean, I could put that one in the Discord. Let me grab the Discord. Where is the Discord? There it is. Um, hopefully, it won't make too much noise. Although, I don't have my speakers on, so it shouldn't be. Uh, Tom's. So, it, I'm going to drag these uh, some of these files into Tom's lesson plans and PDFs, okay? So, I'll drag this file right now there. This little... This little rhythm thing, so you have that. Um, where did it go? Weird. I think it's there. 
didn't give me that plus sign it normally gives me. Like, you want to add this? You click away and you go back. It did. It's there. Okay, cool. All right. Sorry. Getting organized. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. All right. So. <clears throat> I'm going to give you, here, here, here are the chords, um, and the chords for this, I've got two sheets of chords here, and you can create, you can combine these, uh, uh, these, actually these are screen caps, so these are not PDFs, but you know, all right, you can see I put the fingerings on there, if the, if the string is dotted, that means don't play that string, okay? And the D over C is not easy. I'm hoping I got everything right. I mean, I triple checked everything, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. All right. So there's the chord shapes. But those that's not the order of the chords, okay? That's just all the chords in the song. Here's the order of the chords. Come on. And this took a while to do. Why is it? Took me longer to do than I thought it was going to take, but um, I'm going to move this up here and I'll move this down here. Now you should be figuring it out. If you if you play this, you'll go, oh, okay, I know what this is. Just got got to organize. All right, now that that's a little small there. Those those numbers on the chord diagrams a little small for you if you're watching on your phone or something. Um, but let me, let me drag that into there and this. Okay. Why? It's so weird. Why is it not? Oh, that's C plus. Oh. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I may have to do it afterwards if it's not, if it's not there. Somebody want to check the discord and see if my, the files are there real quick. Just to know. Okay. No, I was on Tuesday last week. Uh, I had to I had to move it, John, from Monday to Tuesday. All right. So um, each so on the if you look at the chord uh, list there, see this is gonna be interesting here. Uh, you know, I can move this maybe over here, and maybe even make it bigger, and then move this up here. I don't want to block my hands. Okay. So. What a mess. <laughs> Mystery song number three. Yes, thank you, Bob. You got it. Uh, where's the edit? Mystery song number three. You've got to hide your love away. A long title for a Beatles song. The Beatles. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do this. Oop. Okay. And I'll make this smaller so it's not in the way. All right. So, um, <clears throat> there's a video of from the movie Help. It was written for the movie Help. John was trying to kind of sound like Bob Dylan, right? This was John's attempt at, at doing Bob Dylan. I'm giving me a hard time keeping this the way of me. I'm so important. <laughs> you need to see me. No, actually, you prefer this, don't you? You'd rather me. I do that. Okay, so here's <laughs> That's the verse. And from the video from Help, 
John is actually, and he is playing a 12 string. I think George is playing a nylon, but I don't know. Recording it's nylon. I think George is sitting on the sofa playing nylon. John's sitting in a chair. Famous scene, not a famous scene, but just it's a movie. Um, and uh, so each one of those, those are dotted quarter notes. Don't worry about that. There won't be a quiz on this, okay? No quiz on this. Um, but each each of those, <clears throat> that first rhythm pattern, this, that, one, two, and three, and you play that for each one of those dotted quarter notes. All right. Um, just so you know, a quarter note is is a is worth one beat, right? Is so if the song's in four four, you have four quarter notes. We're in six eight, so we have six eighth notes. Um, so technically, a quarter note in six eight would be worth two beats. Um, but we don't play, we don't typically play six eight in a three four. If you wanted three three quarter notes, you would call it three four six eight. Again, you have that one, two, one, two. So that dot, just so you know, um, that dot adds 50% of value. So if a quarter note is worth a quarter note, 50% of a quarter note is an eighth note. So you add a, an eighth to a quarter and you get a total of three eighths, three eighth notes. And that's, the, that's how long that first strumming pattern, that's three eighth notes and there's six eighth notes in that pattern. So that's that twice. But basically, you're going to change. You can see where it goes to. It goes G, D sus, F2, G, and we're going to go over these chords. C, it does C for two times through that pattern. Okay, and it does that again, and it does C again later, and then D sus, it does it twice. Um, but most of the time, you're almost changing every time you go through that pattern. Okay? Everybody's, everybody's here. A lot of people here. What's our total right now, though? <clears throat> 13 likes. Come on. Yeah, so this, uh, yeah, it took me a while to create this. It was like, oh, man. I, was, I, I thought, oh, this is that. And it was like, I kept going, well, you know, I should, I should have. I found this. Fortunately, the rhythm thing, oh, shoot. This thing I already had. We'd done that before. Um, Tom, when writing a song, how do you decide which voicing over a given chord to use? Uh, core tone of root bass choice. Um, you know, I, one of the things that, and, and in fact, this is a great example of it. One of the things you want to do is you will want to imagine the voicings. When you're voicing chords, um, whether you're voicing for a song you're writing, or, and voicings are, you know, the notes in the chord, the voicings. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, you are either doing that or you're doing an arrangement or you're trying to figure out someone else's thing. But um, what you want to do is you want to think of them as literal voices. Okay. Imagine a hymnal. And um, so here's the thing. A hundred years ago, pretty much every American could read music. Um, and you would go to church and you open up a hymnal and you would pick your part. You would, you know, men, some men would sing the basses, and then some men would sing the tenors, and ladies would sing the altos and the sopranos. And all everyone knew how to read, which is crazy. You know, nobody. It's so rare now for kids, you know, they wouldn't know what to do. Um, and the words were there, too. You know, they didn't have PowerPoint presentations, things like that. Um, so the other thing, too, was true, you know, 100 years ago, was there were almost pianos in every house. Uh you didn't necessarily have to be rich to have a piano. It's just, it was kind of one of those things. Piano was where the music came from. Um, if you didn't have a piano, you didn't have music in your house. Simple as that. There was no, there were no radios. There was no streaming, no, you know, TV or anything like that. I mean, movies hadn't even been around yet. So, um, so you want to think of these, you want to think of your chords as literal voicings. So check this out. <clears throat> if we were to call the first string the sopranos, this would be a super boring melody, but the sopranos have a super easy part. I'm not gonna sing up there, but it's you know, it's just like they have one note. <clears throat> so when John voiced this. And he wrote this song basically by himself. 
Although a friend of his said, hey, you should say hey. <laughs> and that's where the hey came from. Um, hey. And we're going to work on that in a second. Um, so you think of them as literal voices. There's the soprano. Here's the alto part. right that's actually got some motion to it so basically I would consider that if you look at the chords if I just play the top four strings of these chords and then I'm looking at the second string of each chord there's the D and the D sus that'd be the sing the note on the F2 and we're gonna I'm gonna go over these chords don't worry we haven't done that yet and then G again open B and then C we have a C on the uh, second string first fret and then it goes to the F same note and goes back to the C and then back to G, and we go back to open. And that would be the, the alto. So my point being, <clears throat> John, very good question. Um, you generally want to voice it so that there's not too much movement. A bad voicing for the song would be... Right? Or whatever. You just moved everything up and down and everybody went to the you know up just moved everything parallel that would be <clears throat> called bad uh, bad harmony bad voice leading whatever um, if we did the let's do the G string here G, nah, G string uh, we go to we go to uh, G A A G so that's one of those tricks that I, I talk about uh, really helpful if you're looking for a harmony really fast just pick a string I'm just gonna sing the G string So I'm doing some contrary melody. Most of that, a lot of that, is the real melody. If I were to sing the, the B string, it would be... Uh, Sorry. It's a great tool to just... If you're playing guitar, it's just... just Laser focus your ear to whatever that string's doing. I'll, I'll, I'll be like, okay, you know, and then if I can pluck that string out to get me started, I can usually just know, okay, got to go up. Okay, then uh, I'm going back down. No, stay there. Then I'm going down. I don't really have to know what note I'm singing. I just have to know that either am I going up or am I going down? Because it's in, in, if you're singing the G string, there's only two possible notes in this progression, G and A. If you're singing the B string, there's only two, three notes. A, I'm sorry, uh, B, C, and D. Okay, and then if you're singing the, the G string, or the high E string, there's only one note for, for the whole verse. Well, that's not true. It goes, when it goes to the descent, he actually goes to a D chord. Okay, and this is one of the things I got wrong. I told you I had taught this thing wrong for years. I didn't realize he was doing an F sus, a D sus, but he really is. It's, 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 that sounds more right. It used to do it. Now that sounds too, it's more droney than that. So, so he, you know, John is doing this 6-8 thing. He's doing open chords. He's doing, you know, he's trying to do this kind of folk Bob Dylan kind of vibe. And this is 1964 when he wrote this. Um, and this is a definitely a precursor to Rubber Soul, right? This is a very Rubber, this, could, this song could totally fit on Rubber Soul. It, it almost... There's two or three songs on Rubber Soul that almost sound the same. <clears throat> and um, so, so that's what, when you think about voicing, when you're thinking about voicing a chord. Now, I do like parallel movement, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, you know, like, you know. It's not like. Whatever, if I'm creating some kind of pop hook, I'm I'm probably not going to use the best voice lead deck. But I could also do that. I went to F there. I could do something like that, you know, which might would be more 
logical if you're playing on a piano um, or if you're you know trying to arrange a vocal part for it or something like that. I might change how I play the chords when I'm trying to come up with vocal parts. I'm like I'm teaching vocal parts or something. I might go, okay, so we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna go there. You know, we're gonna go. And what I do, that kind of thing, rather than these big giant leaps. And again, rock and roll wouldn't exist really if you didn't have parallel movement. All right, that's what we're gonna learn next week. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Although everybody played, I played again another song. I feel bad for all my students. I should give refunds to all of them because <laughs> I taught all these songs. Are... That's how we played it, you know. Oh, you're welcome, John. Okay, I don't know if you can see these charts. Hopefully, you can kind of see them. So let's let's talk about the chords. Okay, we already talked about the G chord. All right. So here's the thing, you're gonna leave, until you get to the last two bars of this verse, you're gonna leave your pinky on here. I was watching a video, John's pinky never, when he was playing, his pinky was always there except when he went to the D chord. And then when he went to D over C, he played it like, oh. <laughs> he played it like this though. Man, I haven't dropped a pick in a guitar in years. Hilarious. Okay, my trick for getting a pick out is, I'll try not to hit it on anything, is to try to, Get it opposite. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. Ah, I missed. I did it wrong. Here we go. If I go this way, it's better. There it is. I get it opposite the sound hole and then flip the guitar quick. All right. Quail, what's going on? Hey, Jan. Good to see you. Yes. Good voice leading is, it's well, yeah, you just don't want this, you don't want to make the singers go, la, 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 you know, you don't want to do that. That's just not, you, know, you learn this in college, and again, rules are made to be broken, right? Um, if we were to obey rules of the key of G, we wouldn't be playing an F chord in the song. So you can't, you can't say rules are always right. Because um, I always say rules come in real handy when you're trying to figure out someone else's music, but when you're creating your own music, you don't have to obey any rules. If it sounds good to you, then then it's, you know, it's you just got to make yourself happy with your song. I mean, if you're writing pop tunes with a group of people, then that's different. <laughs> you you got to it's it's a it's a it's a kind of a committee kind of thing, and you got to come up with something that everybody likes. Uh, but if you if you hear if that sounds good to you and that makes you happy, then, then play it. So anyway, okay. Uh, oh, you're in up in Appleton. Wait, oh, you're waiting. Oh, you're. Oh, wow. <laughs> you're sitting in an airport, Bruce. <laughs> That's funny. Are you have your buds on, or can everybody hear me? All of a sudden, I get all these new subscribers from Appleton. I'm like, wow, where did they come from? Okay. So the D sus. So when you play the G, you just leave your pinky there, and then make a D sus. So it's fourth string open. First finger on the second fret of the third string, third finger on this third fret of the second string, and pinky still on the first string, third fret. Okay. There we go. And then the F chord. And this might be one where you're gonna sit here and practice playing back and forth, just one strum each. Just get it down. And the other thing you have to do when you're playing these two chords in particular is you kind of have to moderate your strumming. You don't want to strum all six strings. You really do want to just kind of go for the top three strings and maybe get the fourth string. Okay, so it's like. Now, um, I, when I play the D, I don't really have a way to mute the fifth string. I guess I could bring my thumb around. I'm not recommending that. Um, the F chord, I can kind of touch with my third finger here. I can kind of touch the the uh, fifth string a little bit. So if I accidentally hit the fifth string, it's it's gonna get muted and not ring out. Yeah, that's right, Well, Okay, so what you might have to do to get this down is you might have to practice just one strum each. Don't do the pattern. There you're strumming it five times. You don't need to waste your time 
Don't waste your life strumming. <laughs> Just get that chord down. Then, you, then when you're doing the song, you, you can strum it. But just kind of notice the path. So the F chord is third finger on the third fret of the fourth string, second finger on the second uh, second fret of the third string, and first finger on the first fret of the second string. Pinky is still on the top string, third fret. Okay? And you can sit here and go, oh, okay, my first finger is going from here to here. My second finger is going from nowhere to there. And my third finger is going from down here to up there. And you can kind of observe those paths, but you also ultimately want to get to the point where you're not thinking about it. Okay? So that's a good, almost a good exercise there. I still want to do a video where I do like jazz, like, like little, exor little exercises where you're using all these different voicings and, and moving, forcing your finger. Like one of my favorite little things is D major, uh, this is D major ninth, and then this is E over D. In, but it's musical too. In fact, that sounds like a sounds like a Stevie Nicks song, right? Is there a Stevie something like? That? Is that when I started, Sam? <laughs> That's when we found out what song we we're doing. Okay, so we have G, D sus, F two to G, and then we just go to a C, but again, keeping our pinky on the top string, third fret. Fifth string with our third finger, second fret, fourth string with our second finger, open G string, and first fret, uh, first finger on the second string, and then pinky on the top. Okay? And then we just, the great thing about this little change is going to the F2 from the C, it's kind of why this note is there, I think, because And remember, we're, the first time we play C, we're going to play C for two, two of those strum iterations, okay? So... And again, G, D sus, F2 to G. So, so Bruce, you don't have a guitar out then, do you? And then, okay, so this is where we're going to do a little change here. And there's a little little, little hop here we're going to learn too, all right? So, um, so we got F2. We're going to go, instead of going to C, you could go to C. Um, but really, we're going to C over E. So you kind of really want to try to emphasize that fourth string. So we're going F chord, which is the three, two, one, three, going to the C over E. So we're playing C, but we're not playing the bottom note. We're starting on the... Did you do whipping post too, Sam? <laughs> that one's 22 minutes long. You, you, when, whenever they put uh, In a God and a Vita on the radio, you knew <laughs> you knew the DJ had to go number two. <laughs> That's all I ever thought. I was like, oh, send me to heaven. Oh, he's got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> In a God and a Vita, he's got to go number two. Okay. If he put on whipping post, he's, he's going to take a shower too. So F2 to... C over E. You can practice that one as well. Again, I love that kind of little micro practicing. Practice the practice the change. Uh, like I said, with bands, oftentimes where you make mistakes is in the transition from the verse to the chorus, chorus back to the verse, intro to the ver verse, whatever. You can practice those. Let's start the like, last two bars of the chorus. Let's get back into the song. You know that kind of thing. So you, the, those the moments where things change is where you, where the mistakes happen. Okay. Okay. So. Um, and then we, he goes to D, and he's got D for two bars. But he does that little hop there, which is great. I love that thing. It's, it's, and we're gonna get into it in the chorus too. But it's a musical, it's a musical device. It's a, it's basically what it's. It's John going. That's boring. You know, he's probably thinking he's in three four. Okay, he may be thinking one two three one two three. One, Waltz. I don't think that he probably thought it was in 6-8, you know, and so if he thought it was in 3-4, maybe we sh I could make the argument that the song's in 3-4, right? Um, but, uh, 
the um, uh, but he's got if he's thinking these are three four bars he's thinking I, I'm sitting on I'm sitting on D sus for especially I think if it's a he's singing a note one note I think here is a See, he's singing a lot of lyrics over the and melodies over the C chord. So that one doesn't bother him much, although I think he does that hammer on. Okay, let's go to the C chord for a second. Play the C chord again with the pinky on the top string. And take the second finger off, hit the chord, and then hammer on that. It's a great. I love that going. It's a, basically going from a C2 to a C chord. Okay? Um, I don't want my piano up, but that's that's um uh, Floyd Kramer would, made a career out of hammering on thirds from seconds in Nashville, okay? Back in the 50s and 60s. It was kind of his name. He was like, you know, what does he do? That would be that, you know. It's just a great sound. So there's... So I'm sure John probably does a Yeah, he does. Now, as soon as I did it, I went, yep, he did that. Because it's, again, you know, it's too, too long to sit on one chord. I got to do something with it, right? Maybe a typical guitar player kind of thing, like antsy guitar player, like, you know, easily bored. Um, but it's also a musical device. It's also, a, you know, kind of keeping the thing going. So oh, your dad loved Floyd Kramer. I know. Yeah, I, I'm glad my dad didn't like <laughs> Floyd. I don't think I listened to a lot of Floyd Kramer, but you know what I'm saying. Holly knows who. You can Google it later. Uh, you'll get a kick out of it. Um, I think he did solo piano records, right? Solo country rec songs on piano, and then but he played. He backed everybody up. So his licks were on so many records in the '60s, uh, maybe '50s and '60s, maybe '70s too. Country went through a giant metamorphosis in the uh, 80s so um so um so uh where okay so the C so the hammer on thing you can practice so you could probably put it on a one two and three and so if I do that uh, so With the hammer on added, I'm playing solid, solid 16th notes through that three beats, right? Uh, two, E, uh, two, N, E, N, whatever. If I count, count, let me count it as four, five, six. So four and five and six and, okay? Four and five and six and. He does this thing where he goes. It's so nice. I love that. Basically, it's kind of like you're telegraphing the G chord. You're telling everybody, yeah, we're getting back. We're getting ready to go back to the G chord. And he never goes to the F sharp. Not there. He does later, but he doesn't here. Okay. Okay. And so this is kind of the the takeaway from this song. And I get asked this all the time. And we talked about this, and I think I've, um, <clears throat> uh, maybe I should do, let me pull up my thing. But we I get asked all the time about embellishments, okay? Um, and this is a classic embellishment thing. Let's see, YouTube ideas. My, I could do a thing of my favorite embellishments. My favorite embellishments I could do one um, electric and acoustic that's, that's kind of not a bad idea right you like that um, I'm gonna try being that my my bride is out of town I'm gonna try to get hey Douglas what's going on uh, no, the, oh, which chord? 
the fourth chord note, it's just it's just C with a G on top. Yeah, yeah, I think Dylan would use those hammer-ons a lot too. Yeah, Dylan was big on that. Um, and, and one of my favorite embellishments is coming up. It's in the chorus. Um, but this, what he does here is he, uh, he's, I think he plays basically the first three beats. He just plays normal. And then he hits the hammer on, he takes the first finger off. So do that with me. Play the D sus chord, but take your first finger off and hammer on. And hammer ons, what you want to try to do is you kind of want to try to get, make sure it's the tip of your finger. Um, and you want to kind of tr imagine kind of driving the finger through the fretboard. Okay, that's what my teacher always told me. And you should, you should almost be able to hit it hard enough to generate. And if you can go close to the fret, that helps. But you should be able to generate tone just by hammering it on without strumming it. Okay. If you can do that, you're probably going to be fine. So, boom, chugga, lugga, off, and on. Chugga, and then I think on the lugga, <laughs> you take the first finger off. So check this out. Right? And then maybe he even does. He just doesn't play the upstroke on that end of that. Because he's going to G. It's like so many guitar players. I mean, how often do we go? Use that to change chords because <laughs> we can't unlike piano <laughs> unlike piano you can play a chord put the hold the pedal down the chord keeps ringing out you can kind of get your hand over the next chord and then put your hand up and push the chord down at the same time you lift the pedal out see guitar players can't we can get close but we can't instantly change chords like a piano player can um, so we use certain tricks to kind of bias a second uh, a millisecond or two and so that's that really gets him going there. And he may even take off. He may even take off the third finger so he can go there too. Listen to this, it might sound right. Let's see. So he's kind of setting up the uh, setting up the G chord. Okay, so here. Ringo's tambourine come in, right? It's just like ingrained in there. Um, okay, so the second half of the verse is identical until we get to the end. We do the same F2, and you'll notice it's nine bars, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is it Charlie Sexton, the guitar player? Does he play with Dylan? I'm trying to think. Of, I, I read an interview with Dylan's guitar player. And um, he was saying Dylan wouldn't do a song the same way twice. In fact, he wouldn't even do verses the same way twice. You had to be ready to do a 10-bar verse instead of a 12-bar verse, or a 14-bar verse instead of a 12-bar verse, or a 15-bar verse instead of a 16-bar verse, or a 16-and-a-half-bar verse instead of a 16-bar verse. He, he would just cut things short, add things, and go to the next thing or sooner or later, um, and they just had to follow him. <laughs> and they, if you watch him live, you know, you map out his songs, you know, he's not, he's not really thinking about it. In fact, I keep meaning to call Gary. Um, Gary kind of does that with his song. He kind of goes to the next section when he wants to go there, when he's ready to go there. Um, and, uh, and so if you want it a little bit more, you know, I hate to say on the grid because that's kind of a pop thing, and uh, but you don't have to have it perfect time. But it's nice to have a predictable format um, that people can kind of latch onto, listeners can latch, on, latch onto. If you are cutting bars or adding bars to phrases that you're doing it different every single time, the comfort level from the audience perspective is never really going to ever get there. I know that's kind of a weird thing, but it's actually true. So, yeah, okay, so Charles Sexton. I met Charlie Sexton at, uh, in fact, Dylan's whole band was at the show I went to, uh, to see, I went to the Roxy, no, 
Was it the Roxy I went to? Yeah, I went to the Roxy in Hollywood to see my friend Buddy Miller play with uh, Emmy Lou Harris. That was a great show. And the whole Dylan's whole band was there because I guess he was in town. Um, and it was the Grammys week. Oh, that's why they were in town because they were there for the Grammys. And uh, so uh, it was um, that was pretty cool to kind of sit. And I, because I was friends with Buddy, I immediately had some credibility because <laughs> I was seriously not in the same camp, you know. All right, so. Yeah, muted sound. Yeah, it's a guitar, secret guitar trick. Exactly. Um, and and the, the, the hard thing about this song, probably the hardest thing about this song is when you're playing the four string chords, of which there are a lot of them. Notice, again, when you look at my uh, chord diagrams here, there's a dotted line. That means don't play that string. The D sus, the F2, the C over E all have that dotted line uh, for the bottom two strings. Okay. Um, the D over C, the G major 7 over B, and the D over A all have it on the bottom string, and the C chord. So those, those chords, you don't want to play the bottom string. The only time you're playing all six strings is on the G chord, is that right? Yeah. So, so you do have to kind of learn this moderation thing. Um, and again, there's tricks. The D, on the, if you're playing a D chord, if you hit the A string, it's not horrible. But if I hit all the strings, it's going gonna, it's gonna to, check it out. If I hit all the strings, it's going to be like mush. say really moderate your right hand you know make it tighter okay don't do these big strokes like that and maybe even on the g chord don't worry about getting the bottom so, you know uh you'll notice that um uh who's the old guy uh with a hole in his guitar shoot he was just in the super bowl ad too um uh, with a braid you know who I'm talking about. He he has a hole in his guitar because he's he's really only playing the top few strings. He's almost playing a guitar like a ukulele. He's trying to get that bright sound out of it, probably because he's like, yeah, I got a bass player. I don't need to play the bottom strings. And my friend Brad brought, bought a really nice D45, and he he intentionally played like that to knock a hole. He put a hole in his guitar right here, <laughs> which is like, you know, I don't know. It's like, I guess it's cool, but if you start damaging the bracing, your top could get jacked up. So... Um, thank you, Willie Nelson. Thank you, Sam. I always count on Sam <laughs> filling in my <laughs> the blanks in my brain. Yes, Willie. So Willie, you know, part of the reason he has that 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 thing there is because he's. Hand in hand, that's how he would do it. But he would really emphasize the top four strings, and if you did that with the song, you'd probably be fairly fine. As you get better. Um, you can kind of bring out, bring out that big G chord, you know, because it's in the G, key of G, so you want that G chord to sound massive. And you'll get better at, at, at missing strings. That's just something that comes with time, okay? It comes with practice, and you can be targeted practice, but not too targeted, okay? Again, we you get into that syndrome where you're looking at tablature and going, okay, now Steve Ray Vaughan... According to the tab, he 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 muted the bottom four strings on the first hit, but on the return he hit the top five strings. So I'm gonna, you know, no, he, he, Stevie didn't think about any of that. Uh, so you want it to be natural. You don't want to sit here and go. Okay, you just want to moderate a little bit. You can practice it. Record yourself. Listen back. Is it muddy? If it's if you're hitting those bottom two strings or even the A string too much um, on the top four string chords, it'll sound muddy, and you'll, you'll be like the 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 chords won't quite sound concise, succinct. Good words, Douglas. Thank you. And and again, like I said, I taught this song wrong for years. I used D on this. I'm like, something like that, you know. I, I don't think I went to full bar chords. But I don't think I did that chord. But when I watch the video and I listen to it again, I see John and he's he's playing G like this, and then he goes to D sus and he okay. And then this section, this is the hard, this is the hardest part of the song. This is the last two bars of this verse going into the chorus. Hey, you know where it goes, right? Is the 
Now I'm gonna say, I say it's the hardest. The the last two chords are not hard. The first chord's not hard. It's really just this D over C, and John really plays D over C like this. So play a D chord, and then reach over with your pinky and get that C note. And you don't have, you can deaden that D string. In fact, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want both those notes to get, uh, that would create muddiness. Anytime you have small intervals low, it's gonna create muddiness. You know, I like small intervals high. Or, they sound great. Minor seconds, but you put a minor, you put a minor second down low, and it just gets muddy. You know, I played E over F sharp with a sus, you know, A. It's just like no, 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 no. I might play it like this. It's actually a really cool chord. But I'm muting the A string. So you don't want, uh, yeah, you don't want when you play this John Lennon. D over C chord. And this is the same guy that would often play D like this, which is freaking N E. I, I saw him live, you know, playing, you know, with the Beatles. I saw a live video and he's playing, sometimes he plays E chord like this. Did he come up with, what is it? Did he come up with that? Is that a John thing? That sounds like a John. I think that's how you play it. I'm gonna learn that one too. That's one of my favorite. Thank you, Vince. Um, that's one of my favorite um, Beatles uh, riffs. Uh, is that just that descending line from Hell? It's just such a great sound. Um, okay, so we have the D, D over C sharp, and this is a scenario where you could just hit on the downbeat of each of these triplet groupings. Okay. One, two, three, two, two, three. On the one, two, you could just hit the bass note or try to hit the bass note. Kind of emphasize the lower part of the chord, okay? So, okay? And notice on, so he's not playing D over B, so you don't have to do, you don't have to get that, that pinky over to the second fret, okay? And you don't have to refinger D and play it like this, okay? He actually, in the video, he took his second finger off, I mean, his first finger off the third string and put it up there. So technically, again, don't worry about the name of this chord. I had to call it what it was. Um, technically, it's G over B. I, I, the, my temptation was to say D, D over C, D over B, D over A. Because now we're playing the A string. You'll notice that D over A has, that fifth string is not dotted. It's solid. So that means you're playing it. So now we're allowed to play the, D, the A string on it, okay? Uh, you pull my middle finger. Yes. Yeah. I'm just telling you what John did, okay? And if you hit, listen to it, it sounds right. And I'm like, dang it, that's right. You know, it's amazing when you can actually see them play. That was the thing, one of the things I loved about Get Back, and, wa and I've watched some more of it recently. And I just, I just love seeing them play. Just seeing their hands on the guitars. You know, and then watching them, the writing process, let it be, you know, and then, uh, what's his name, uh, the producer, not George Martin, but the other, the, the producer for Let It Be, he was, you know, going, oh, you should do this descending thing, you know, and it was kind of his idea, you know. Whatever then. Um, and, um, you know, it's just, that stuff it just amazes me. So I'm watching the, excerpt from and I found it on Vimeo so it's not on YouTube they took it down uh, there's weird versions of it on YouTube there's one where some guy's playing <laughs> and just playing it badly you know uh, to the video it's so funny but on Vimeo I found that scene so I think if you go to uh, Bing Microsoft Bing and enter you got to hide your love away it's one of the videos up there is a Vimeo video so you can actually see John, the, the scene from the movie, uh, help. And, you know, they're, they're finger syncing, they're lip syncing, right? Um, and when they did that on TV shows, they would goof off. So there were times where the Beatles had the lip sync, and they hated, they hated doing that. John particularly. John really hated finger lip syncing. You know, they didn't do it on uh, Ed Sullivan, um, but they had to do it on... Um, some shows, the British shows, particularly Top of the Pops, I think they had to do it. 
I can't remember which shows. I'm sure some of you are Beatle things. Hey, Buku, Buku. Get Back is amazing. Yeah, it's so, so good. This is like, it makes me happy. Yeah, it's so good. So, um, uh, but on this thing, you know, because it was, you know, I think they thought it was a little more permanent because it was the film. They're really kind of playing. Now, George is not. George is kind of like, I don't know if he can hear what's going on. And, and I've done these for movies. These It's called, well, they're not sidelining. <laughs> they're headlining. But I've sidelined. And sidelining, I did a video on this, and I've talked about it before, where you're, I'm higher, you know, when they when you see musicians in a movie or a TV show or whatever, um, they have to be, they, you know, they have to be union musicians. So I'm a union, union, I'm in the union, not that it does anything for me, but um, I'm in the union. And so they, you know, they have to call union musicians. And they, they'll send you the MP3 the night before. You'll learn it. One time it was a really complex heavy metal, like <laughs> two-handed thing. So I kind of had to learn that because I was finger syncing. So they were, it, it was supposed to be the actor, but it was really me uh, when they zoomed in on the hands, which is funny. So I had to dress like him. And, uh, we had the same wedding ring, which worked out. Uh, so I, I, you can see my hands on this. Uh, it's an episode called, uh, I think it's called The Neighbors. Um, and it was uh, a two-season show, so it didn't last long. Not in syndication because it was only two seasons. Um, oh no! What? Oh, that's good. Sorry to hear about that. Um, quail. I think quail's gone. Um, so, so when you when you're playing. Um, for example, when I did Gangster Squad, which is a movie with Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, um, I had what's called an earwig. I had a thing in my ear and I could hear the music um, in my ear, but nobody else really could hear it. Uh, the band could, though. Everybody in the band, it was a big band, everybody in the band had earwigs. Uh, and what they would do is they would play, play the music in the room, like up to that, you know, um, and that would be synced to tape. So when later... When our hands are moving in time and the dancers are moving, the dancers did not have earwigs. Um, and the dancers were amazing because they would dance like they were ballroom dancing. They were really good at this. It's kind of what they did without making any noise, which is really hard. Because if you've ever heard dancers, you know, on floor, you know, they're making noise. No, they're really quiet because what they're doing is only the band's here. I'm missing my strings. See, I can't hit my strings because they're recording dialogue, right? So there's a scene where they're, you're here, two people talking, and you can see a band in the background. Well, they'll play the music in the room for just about five, ten seconds, and then they cut it off, but I keep hearing it. So they, that sets the scene for everyone in the room to know what's going on, but particularly for the dancers to kind of get their thing. Well, the dancers were watching my arm because I was chopping wood. This took place in 1949, so I had a 1940s K archtop that I bought for the movie, and, uh, you know, it w was not electric, so I had to... You know, it, back in the day, you would have been like banging it out because you're competing with drummer, bass player, piano player, and a horn section. Um, so the, I was kind of playing like I would have been playing, like pretty hard. But I was missing the strings. I didn't ever hit the strings. And from the perspective, that looks like I'm hitting the strings. The drummers have a harder time. But one of the tricks they do with drums, and you can try this if you have a drum set around, is they'll stack cymbals. So if you put two cymbals on and you hit them, it doesn't make a sound really. It doesn't ring. It makes a clack. But that's it. It stops. So you put two cymbals on. So that's what they would do. Everything was double cymbaled. Uh, they had a really cool old vintage drum kit, which I hid on, hid behind at one point in the movie. <laughs> you, could, you could see my ass in the movie <laughs> when they when they're blowing up the place. And, and it was a Josh Brolin, uh, yeah, Josh Brolin uh, shot off a shotgun like right next to me, like a bunch of times. We had to shoot the scene over and over again. And he, every time he apologized, like, dude, I'm so. And I have like ear protection. And he goes, dude, I'm so sorry, you know. And I said, are you kidding? Because because he shoots the gun right right next to me, and supposedly hits the ceiling, and they drop all this plaster down. <laughs> so, and I don't think that scene made the movie. I'm trying to remember. They really cut it. Um, but uh, at, as soon as he does that, I'm I'm like, I, they tell me to react how I would react, and so I'm like. Crap, and I grab my guitar, like protecting my guitar, because at that scene I have a, a classical, I have my Ramirez, you know, and we're, we're oh, we're backing uh, Carmen Miranda, right? So I'm, I'm, I run behind like the drum kit, 
so my my butt's sticking out. It was pretty funny. Um, anyway, that's 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 called sidelining. So the Beatles, when they filmed this, they're technically not really playing. Obviously, they're playing to the recording, and they're so they're playing the recording in this scenario. They're playing it really loud because they didn't have earplugs in, and they didn't have earwigs back then, and they didn't have. I know that's a horrible name, earwigs. I hate the name. That's a bug, and I was I hate the idea of putting an earwig in my ear. But it's a little micro, you know. It's a it's a it's a little um, uh, you know ri you know wireless transmitter, so they can transmit music to your ear. So um, and um, so they're just playing. They got the music loud in the room, and John's John's legit. He's you know because he's the vocal. He's singing the song. He's got the 12 string, he's sitting in the chair and he's singing the song and he's literally like, he, he got this down. Like he did the right, you know. Um, so when he does. Okay, so that descending line again, D. And then if you can get that pinky over there, you can slide the chord down like this. Okay, that's D over C. But if you want an alternate version, you could take your second finger and put it up there. Well, it's hard to do. Hard to, hard to do in <laughs> looking at it and the reflection. Okay. See that, and then, but the one he does here, the 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 where it gets to the B note, so he's just C B A, okay, luck of cheese, <laughs> squirrel, uh, is he puts the first finger there. I'll have cheese crackers for lunch. Um, This is something I could totally see Dylan doing. Right? You can practice this section a lot. And again, I'm hitting that A string. And so what I'm trying to do on this descending line is I'm trying to actually just kind of start that out. Hitting the bottom note, maybe the bottom two. specific notes. You get good like me. And then we're going to go to our G chord. And now we're going to the chorus. Okay. Now, for some reason... Oh, did any... Sorry, Holly. Did you check and see if those showed up? I, I click away from it. And if I click back to it, Tom's lesson plans, it says it's there, but I'm not get. Oh, no, no. It's, it's not there. What the heck? I'm just going to put a number three there, and then I'm going to hit return. Okay, now it's uploading. So I had to put some kind of text or something, or maybe I just had to hit return. Because there's the first part. Okay, now let me drag the next section over. So the disc, oh, I didn't, I didn't pin the Discord. You guys are yelling, have you been yelling at me for that? So here's the Discord link, I got to pin it. So I keep talking about putting stuff in the Discord. So there's a, a tab on the Discord, uh, in our Discord group, called Tom's Lesson PDFs, um, and that has uh, these little diagrams that I'm creating. So the next section is going to be the chorus. It's fairly easy. I mean, we got that climb up. We're going to do that. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of all these. Okay. I don't, we don't need the strumming groove anymore. Uh, you know what? I think I'll stay, I'll keep that for now. Let me get rid of this. I don't want to have them all up there. It's already hard enough to to see everything. And I'll get rid of this. Um, okay. And then I'll drag in, who's this? This is the chord, the chorus chords. There we go. Sorry, it's kind of being ornery. I had to grab a corner. All right. And this is going to be one of those embellishments I've always liked. Um, learned it from this song. Used it a million times. Everyone's used it. Um, and uh, let me try to make this as big as I can get it. Because it just encroaches. I should have done 
See, that's going to get in the way of my hand, isn't it? Kind of, yeah, I don't like the look of it. I wonder if I could put it down here and then aim the, this up a little bit. No, that's the wrong way. And then aim it down a little bit. No. Aim it, yeah, but like that. I don't know. I've never been very organized. All right, so. There we go. All right. So now we're in the chorus. All right. So we just did that descending to thing, like John does. This. Now my thinking on this is that he's not really trying to hit. G and then G over A and then G over B and then to C. He's just trying to get those notes. Okay, so let's play that scale together. Just the first four notes of a G scale. Here, we've got our third finger and then open A, second fret with the second finger, and then go into the C chord. So we play G and hit that. And you notice that's three beats G, A, B, and then C is the downbeat. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to play one bar, I mean, uh, uh, three beats of the of the groove on G. That's three. One, two, three. Okay? One, two, and three. And then we're going to play four, five, six, just single notes. Okay? And if you hit a couple strings at a time, it's totally fine. Um, thank you, Holly, for doing all that paperwork. Um, oh, I got it. I got it. It's still not. Not good. Hit. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So everything should be uploaded. Everything's there now in the Discord. Um, so we got. Okay. And if you hit a bunch of strings in the process, that's fine. Just try to make the bass line the lowest, okay? Here, I'm gonna do it one way, I'm gonna do it um, hitting individual notes, making it as bass line-like as possible. Okay. okay, but I think he's a little more sloppy than that, okay? He's kind of hitting Right? He's kind of going, kind of doing a Floyd Kramer thing again, Holly. Okay. I think he's hitting more like, like the A string, the D string, and the G string. You know, whatever. But it's you, you kind of keep it on the lower strings to emphasize the fact that you got this climbing line that you're kind of playing bass. The main reason I tilted the thing so you can't see my crazy hair. <laughs> Okay, Joseph, I hope you're well. Take care of yourself. I hope it's a good, everything's good news from the doctors. It's always stressful to go to a doctor. <clears throat> so, again, what, you can just practice that. Now, notice I brought my thumb around. The thumb's kind of helping me out a little bit. And if you can't get G chord to sound good with, with your thumb up here, you're probably going to need to leave probably going to need to leave it behind the neck to give you that um, strength that you need to make a, a proper chord, a good sounding chord. If your chord sounds like, like that, you know, you're probably going to need to bring your thumb around. Okay, almost always suggest that for beginners, but as you get better, your thumb kind of serves another purpose after a certain time. Once you get, you know, confident with those, um, uh, you know, with basic chords. Okay, so... And again, we have two, two bars of C chords, so he's probably going to hammer on. Watch. I bet, I'm sure he's, he's probably doing that little hammer on there. Uh, any unscheduled appearances happening this week? No. You guys saw me on Saturday. Was it Saturday I, I did that? I was because I'm, I'm I've got like I'm hoping I can get to them uh, some videos. I got plans to do like four videos this week. I have four four or five video ideas. So 
Uh, drop D tuning is one of them. But no, those won't be live. Those will be. I'll, I'll record those and post those up in legitimate kind of scenarios. So. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is you. This is the this is the this is the money for this song. It really, really is. As much as that, as much as that F chord in the key of G is is really kind of like a money chord. This this is this that's the thing that that's the hook. Okay. Um, I, I think there's a couple things. I think that that melody, that movement, you, just going, you, you know that. Again, you have to do something there because you have no lyrics, no melody, nothing. Uh, so that's probably part of it. But I think that that, that little thing it got used so much after that. I think of... Uh, 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 Anticipation by uh, Car is Carly Simon. She would do that like so it's one of my favorite embellishments um so we're gonna go d sus which is the chord we've been using to d and take off the second finger d2 and then back to d and the weather la was la was showing off it was 80s all week last week uh up to the super bowl so now we have I think there's probably like 400,000 people from Ohio that want to move here now. Because <laughs> it's like, they were all out here for the Super Bowl or whatever. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> there's places with this good of weather? Yeah, it's not normally that nice. But it was, yeah, January can be really nice weather in L.A. It's going to be 80 today, but then tomorrow it's supposed to be 61. So it's like, what? And rain, which I'm like, yay. So... <laughs> I was totally impromptu, uh, but I was doing some work, and I thought, well, I was I was kind of doing, ended up not getting much work done, but I was going through some old, not old, just some recordings from last month. Uh, the songs got mixed and released um, the for the game Apex Legend, which I play all the guitars on. Everybody take a sip. And um, uh, and just a reminder, again, this song is played on 12-string. I'm not playing 12-string because I don't want to work that hard today. And nylon. George is playing the nylon. Um, probably a Ramirez nylon. The 12-string, I'm not sure what guitar it is. Um, there's a video I was watching where this <laughs> this guy in Palm Springs has every guitar the Beatles ever you know played, uh, you know, at least in any kind of documented form. It's crazy. I was watching. I was like, gosh. He went on, you know, but everything is right-handed, so he's got a right-handed Beatle bass and that kind of stuff. But uh, hey, Finland, nice for running. Yeah, don't, you gotta be careful running up sleep. Oh my god. Okay, so this. You can just practice this. used for the remember it was used for Heinz ketchup or one of the ketchup companies for years they use that you know where the tip just waiting for the ketchup to come out yeah, actually kind of sweet ad campaign probably premiered during the Super Bowl <laughs> uh, but yeah, that song will be forever kind of in my mind uh, 
connected with ketchup. So, so yeah, the chorus is not that hard. You just gotta get that climb up. And everything's everything's in the key of G here. We got the one chord, four chord. Now, going back to the verse here. There's a good chance that that F chord was an accident, um, and he meant to go to C chord. That would make more sense musically, um, but sounds so much cooler. And I, you know, I know how these things happen, and they're just accidents, you know. And that's a th th this whole little chord change thing. We go G to C to. F2 to C, you know, that whole thing is really friendly for the fingers. It's finger friendly. <laughs> it's my new, my new, uh, I should, yeah, I should start a new YouTube channel, right? Finger friendly. <laughs> finger friendly guitar. But it is, it's very fr friendly to the, it's very easy to play. It's fun. But it's not in the key of G. There's no F chord in the key of G. F chord would be what's called a flat major seven, okay? So in the key of G, we have uh, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, okay? So there's no F in it, so we can put an F major chord in it. Now the A and C are in the key of G, so that's not really too problematic. That would be in the key of G. If you wanted to, you could go here. <laughs> right? Um, that would be weirder. It's a different song. It sounds like something, though, doesn't it? Well, thank you, Lena. God bless you. I talk theory, and Lena gives me money. <laughs> so here's some more theory. <laughs> that helps, though. I did spend some time on this. It was like, oh, man. Uh, so next week, I, I'm going to do an electric song. Um, uh, and I've, I've kind of got it down to two. One's got bar chords and one's open chords. Um, uh, kind of from similar eras. Well, not that similar. One's kind of, I think, late 70s, and the other one might be mid to late 80s. So, you know, I'm not, there's not too many songs that are, that are uh, going to be contemporary that I'm going to, we're going to do, but um, that's kind of not the thing here. Also, so far, um, I haven't gotten um, copyright strikes. Who knows with this one? I sang it so well, I might um, get that copyright strike. But anyway, I'm just kidding. Um, so if I can't monetize it, it'll be curious uh, if they if they take away monetization and they just take it away from me, they still give the money to someone. Hopefully that doesn't affect the Super Chat money. Um, if it does, then, then this series will be over really fast. <laughs> So it's basically like I'm giving you a guitar lesson. Because usually when I talk guitar lessons, for the most part, I was teaching a song every week, right? The goal was to try to learn a new song every week. And I would do it in a progressive manner so that every... Um, I, can, I can move this over here. So that every week you were learning something new. Some new fingering, a new chord, something like that. Remember, I, you know, we talked about this with the Beatles, like... Uh, and I mapped out where John Paul George and Ringo all live. Now Ringo, they weren't child, you know, school chumps, but um, I uh, kind of mapped out. And and it's so funny to hear like uh, George, you know, would say like George and John Paul. They would say if they if there was a they said if there was a, ch a kid across town that knew a chord they didn't know, like they were. It's so funny. It's like that's the internet, right? <laughs> they would get on a bus, go across town, and then. Some kid knew a B7. Oh, oh, that's cool. What can we do? We can do something. Ooh, you know, like they, it's like, wow, you know, that was a revelation. And of course, they would write a song using that chord. So, bye bye, Bruce. Your flight, finally. Yay. Oh, nice. NM, good to see you. Yeah, the sus, that whole thing. That's so good on good. And if you're doing an A, like here's the A chord, you would, I just slide my pinky. See, I play A like this with these. You can do the same thing with A, and then open, 
same frets as the D, but you have to do an A chord. You do it with C chord. You just have to avoid the top string. But I, I like the top string. When you add that F to the to the fourth string, and you have that E string right now on top. That sounds great too. Uh, G. That's how I would do E. That's a that's an awesome one. So I'm playing the E string open, and I'm playing on the twelfth fret of the bottom string. And then if you can get these two strings, actually you can go well. No, you don't want to get that G sharp in there, but you can get the ninth fret middle two strings. If I'm going to do this, I usually do it. And if you just go down one string, you can do it with A, too. D. G. You go up a fret. And back to E. Uh, back to, and then B. <laughs> Here's the song. song over that. Again, I talk about, I teach guitar, I teach, but I'm always trying to teach you how to make music, not play music. Um, because uh, um, <clears throat> that's where, um, you know, that's just being creative is, uh, I believe that we're created in the image of God and God created you know, the mountains that Holly lives in, the lakes that, that Sam lives near, you know, uh, the oceans that somebody invariably near, lives near, whoever's lucky here lives near an ocean. Lena, you live, I, you're up in California too, I think, but the rivers, you know, all that, the, you look at a microscope, you look at a, you look at, at, at a leaf or, you know, or snowflakes, or it's like, <laughs> it's just, yeah, Sam, snowflakes. <laughs> And we're creating God's image. So we're created to be creative. Um, I, you know, we're, you know, we're constantly creating things. And so, um, and I think it's therapeutic to be creative, whether it's writing poetry, whether it's painting paintings, whether it's building things like Bruce has got a workshop in his basement, you know, he likes to build things. Um, whether it's writing music or songs or it's just, and, and so that's what I'm trying to do to, Everything I do generally is to try to give you tools so that not only can you play music and have fun. And, and you know, like I said a couple of weeks ago, the, the most fun I ever have playing guitar almost always is sitting around like a campfire. It doesn't ever happen. But the times I've sat around a campfire playing songs, it's why it's good to have songs like this. In fact, most of the songs, you know, like, well, <laughs> the, the last week's song, I'm not sure, you know, if you, if you want to sit around. Go <laughs> If you want to sit around and play Days and Keys Confused, uh, that would be pretty fun to, to sing and play at a campfire. Uh, what was the first song we did? What was song number one? I forget. Oh, Free Fall. Yeah, Free Fall is a great one. That's a perfect song for, for a campfire. You know, because everybody knows, free, because I'm free. You know, they can sing the chorus, and it's like, oh, man, it sounds so good. Um, just have to have a capo. Oh, you're in Japan. Support. Two days snow. Wow. 98 centimeters, that's a lot. That's like three feet, right? About three. So 90, 100 centimeters would be a meter, and a meter is around three feet. So yeah, dang. That's crazy. Are you, uh, are you, you're, that's where you are, Capone? Uh, and that's not how you say your name, I bet, Capone. Yes, you can totally combine that into one document. Yeah, is, Holly, is that what Holly's saying?
yeah, yeah. You can, you can, yeah. It's you can just drag them into a PDF and then just size them. And not a PDF. I'm sorry. Like into Word or Pages if you have a Mac. Um, and you can just size them, grab the corner, and make them as big as you need them, and print them up. Um, I made them black on white so that they would, you know, I didn't use any colors. Um, I don't even have a color printer. I just have a black and white printer. What did I buy? Oh, I bought some software. Yeah, so um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on? Yeah, Free Fall is so good. This is a great song. Uh, you know, and there may be another Tom Petty song we learned in the piece, but I'm going to try to kind of alternate between acoustic and electric. Uh, this next next week's song, where there's two of them, um, both well-known songs. Um, there's, I'm not going to choose both. I'm just going to choose one or the other. Um, one's got bar chords in it, and the other one I don't think does. I've only, like, it only occurred to me. I went, oh, that would be a great one. But I, I'm pretty sure it's just open chords. But it's on electric. Um, and it also is another, you know, a skill that we haven't worked on yet with this, you know, that's kind of the thing. Like today, the, the skills were um, that we learned, besides learning a new song, we learned a strumming groove, 12, a 6-8 a strumming groove. We learned maybe a new chord or two, okay? Um, we uh, learned an, an embellishment, Um you know, some some refining your your note plane on chords with your strumming. Um, that's something you definitely want to work on. That's definitely something that I use all the time. Oh, you live in Finland. Oh, that's right. You said yeah, yeah, yeah. It snows a lot in Finland too. I bet. Um. Yeah, no worries, Douglas. I'm I'm about ready to hit it anyway. I want to try to try to save my voice a little bit, and I'm going to do a. Uh, I need to conceptualize some videos. I. Uh, I may start recording. I don't know, but um, uh, let me uh, let me see what I can come up with. And because uh, I because I've got I, I want to upload some new videos, and I just don't have any. Oh, I do have one. No, I finished that one. No, that one's done. The the so the newest one is the 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 um the standard tuning one. Okay, so I did four different standard tunings. And I, I think I'm almost to a thousand on that one. It's, I mean, I wish I would, you know, I wish my videos would get like 40,000 the first week, like so many of these. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's only 600. And it's, I don't, I don't, it's been at 600 now for a while. So I don't think anyone's watching it now. Yeah, it's, it's flat dead. It's, well, 67 views in the last 48 hours, not bad, but it's a slightly above my norm, but flat, flat. So here's that one. If you want to watch it, uh, let's see, where, here we go, um, or share it, um, you can always go to, you know, if you belong to any, um, message, uh, not message boards, or Reddit, you can always share it on Reddit, um, I need to do more of that, um, that's how I went from 800 subscribers to 1,200 subscribers in one day, because someone, I was trending on Reddit for a week in 19, or 2014, and, um, on, on the music guitar thing, because, uh, Somebody said, hey, how come Tom, you know, nobody's watching his videos. He's a great teacher. So if I may say so myself. Um, but yeah, the new video that I did uh, that came out last week was uh, on standard tunes, which is how we play. This is E standard, referring to the bottom note. Um, if you tune everything down a whole half step, I didn't really talk about it. I wish I had talked about this. If you tune down a half step, you have E flat standard. Okay. Well, that's what Van Halen plays. And I think Steve Ray Vaughn played an E flat standard. Uh, so a lot of uh, Steve, uh, Jimi Hendrix played E flat standard. So that's a very common thing. And what that E flat standard is a little easier to sing if you're playing an E a little lower. Um, it the strings are a little looser, so they're easier to bend and a little easier to push down. Um, and they have a different tone, and that's kind of the tone they were going for. So and then D standard would be everything down a whole step from E, and then C standard would be down two whole steps. And B standard is what my baritones tune to. That's a typical baris, baritone tuning which is B standard. So I talk about all four of those and uh, and mentioned, and I even included a chart you could download uh, from my Discord, um, not my Discord, from my, um, oh, I should drag that too. That's in my, um, uh, in my Dropbox. Let me go see if I can find that. Excuse me.
I'll, I'll find it later. Okay, so let's see what else is going on. Any questions? Anybody have any questions I can ask? You know, we're not we're almost to eleven o'clock, so you know I, I I don't mind going to two hours. Um, but Holly, thank you for moderating. You too, Dennis. Thank you for all you guys do. Uh, I saw that you had to get rid of just one comment. I'm assuming it was a bot, or or did they get rid of it themselves? Where was it? Here it is. Yeah, it was one of those bots. Well, but just one. It's not bad. So again, you know, I'll, if if I can if, keep monetizing these, uh, if, if here there's, you know, there's three scenarios. They don't they don't demonetize it. They demonetize it, but just take the royalties from the viewing of the video, but not the the money that the, the super chat money you give me. Uh, then I might continue doing them. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna. You know, I don't really do guitar lessons anymore, private lessons. I mean, I do occasionally um, for actors and for pop artists or something like that, you know, because um, I'm a, I'm, my time is kind of expensive. So, um, so I'm not getting, you know, you guys could give a lot of money <laughs> and I probably wouldn't get anywhere near my, uh, my normal fee. So I'm doing it more for the interaction and more for the socialization of this all, but yes. Uh, the G you're using with the open B string, the Beatles complete scores has a G chord with a D note fingered on the B string. Yeah, I'm going by video, but also it sounds right to me too. Sam, I, yeah, I think th that book is often wrong, particularly on guitar parts. I've noticed that. So um, I would say that there's gonna be some contemporary bias in the making of that book. You know, whoever was hired to do it probably didn't do the research of um, uh, to the time to do uh, didn't do the research of watching videos of them playing and things like that. So um, yeah, so John plays it with the open B string in that video, and when I play it, it kind of sounds right, and it makes sense too because of the way that G, you know, he he if he if he played the D note on there, I would think that he might be tempted to go. subtle difference um i don't know that if unless you're doing like a, a beatles uh tribute band probably no one's gonna complain either way would be fine so yeah i've seen many errors errors in that book uh i don't assume errors um but sam i think you could go either way on that i i, I don't think on that video um was on Vimeo I saw it um, such a long long title because <laughs> uh, if I can find it oh you're not gonna load it making me sign in. All right, no, sorry. No. All right, well, never mind. <laughs> Where was this that I found this? Where was that? Wait, wait, let me just click on this one and see if this one plays the... <clears throat> yeah, so this is, this is the video, let me... I'm not, I don't have the sound up. Mm 
Now they're zooming in on John's face. Looks so good, the film and everything. Yeah, they're not showing his hands at this moment. Oh, there he is. Playing a D. Okay. Now they cut away again. They have multiple cameras, probably capturing either multiple performances or... Okay, let's see if we get that. Yeah. There he is. Yeah, he sets the descending thing. Okay. No, not showing. On the chorus, they're not showing his hands. This Paul. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Bouncing. <laughs> I don't think there's bass. It really might be bass on them. The flute solo. Baritone flute and regular flute. Yeah, they never. I, you never see John's hand. See the flute player. But you never see John's hand there, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So, yeah, and it's totally fine. I mean, if you play it that way, Sam, I don't think it matters. No one's gonna say anything. So, yeah, you too, <laughs> you too, Dennis. Dennis is saying goodbye. Have a great week. <clears throat> Uh, that's what, yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying, <clears throat> with, um, and I've done this specifically to sound like an older recording, if I want to, if I want to play, like, if I'm playing and writing a song and I'm using two chord, I'm probably going to play that one, right, the four finger chord with the D on the third string, but there's no third in there, though, really, because you probably aren't playing that note right there. So that's just a G5 chord technically. There's no third. Okay. Um, and you there's things that can analyze what the guitars did, so now we can hear the actual they can analyze it and tell you exactly what the guitars did, which is insane. Um, but if I want to sound more old school, like for example, one thing that was really common. <laughs> that kind of thing you have to play G more open with a B string open okay so there was a lot of songs in the 60s that played G that way because that was how we all played it we didn't play it like that we may have played it like this but we didn't necessarily play it like that that came later uh, in my and I've seen Dylan play it both ways um, I, I don't I, like I said, I wish I could see John's hands. There's no other recordings of them playing it. They didn't really play that song live anywhere that I know of. Because um, it was acoustic. What guitar is this? This is a, a, a Martin D35. Uh, it's a 70s Martin D35. It's pretty beat up. Um, I bought it used and it was really abused. But um, And the 35 is three-piece back. I think they said that's why it's a 35. The three stands for three-piece back. Uh, the the um, uh, twenty eight the D twenty eight which I don't have one I've looked well I have an I have a O twenty I think my nineteen twenty four Martin is a O twenty eight um, but this is uh, yeah three pieces and I think a twenty eight only has two pieces on the back so and so that that's an easy question to answer. Uh, what else? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, John. That was kind of how we all learned it. When If you're my age, you know, probably, and you started playing when you were a kid, that's probably how you learned a G chord. Um, so now next week, uh, it's going to be an electric song, and we're going to have bar chords, okay, and power chords. And I'm trying to decide, I'm probably just going to do um, a chart, a chord chart for the verse. And then for the chorus, uh, let's see. The chorus, I'm probably just going to have a rhythm chart. So, because the chords are hard on the verses, there are bar chords, a bunch of chords, uh, but it's four this is a clue. It's four strums of each. All right. So rhythm. I don't need to write a rhythm chart out. You kind of know the song. 
once once you start playing it, be like, people as soon as you start playing the song, everybody knows it, uh, and everybody tries to sing it. Now, it's uh, another clue is it's really high. It's a male voice. It's very high. Uh, like I said, it's uh, it's either it's seventies, eighties. So you know, everybody sang high in the seventies and eighties. You know, that was not not high like high, but just high that high. Well, they're probably that high too. So that would be, <laughs> maybe gave them the confidence to say this high. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, the the choruses though are. On this one song that I think I'm going to teach, it's going to be a little hard, but it'll be fun. Look, the chorus is, is syncopated, so I kind of want to notate that with a rhythm chart. Uh, but it's just power chords, I think, with one last chord. Um, so we'll see. It's not 25 or 6 to 4. It's not BGs. I Oh, if I could. No, it's not. We did Zeppelin last week. I'm not going to do Zeppelin. Uh, Eagles will be forthcoming. I will do. Um, there's a lot of good Eagle songs. Um, we may do like Lion Eyes or something like that. Let me get the, um, so, um, Yeah, I'm not going to teach story. To, I'm not going to teach necessarily anything that's too like the like over the hills and far away. If I was sitting across from you and I could assess your abilities, then something like over the hills and far away, you know. <laughs> I could I could teach you that, but in this situation, it's really difficult. It's difficult to teach you this this way anyway. But so, no worries. So hopefully, uh, yeah, you got the hide your love way. It's kind of it's not really a Valentine's Day song. <laughs> in fact, it's not really about anything. Uh, it's not really. It, it, it's just words, you know. And John originally sang tall, two feet tall, and then he accidentally sent two feet small, saying two feet small, and he, he stuck with that. He goes, oh, that, that's actually more interesting, which is kind of what I, I say, you know, don't use, that's not, two feet tall is not a, a cliche, but don't use cliches. Don't say, I'm going to paint your red wagon in a song. You know, invent your own cliche. Uh, let people figure it out or make it infer what you mean. Uh, but create your own lyrically. Create your own thing. Don't don't just put something in that's already been said. You know, um, and like I say to young writers, if you find a new way to say "I love you," it's worth a million dollars. And so that's kind of where um, uh, you want to try to voice something. So he sang originally. He had two two foot tall, and like, and there's nothing wrong with two foot tall, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It rhymes and everything with the lyric, but. Um, he accidentally sang two foot small and he went, Oh, I like that better. Two foot small. It's, it, it's like a kind of a backwards way of saying the exact same thing. So it, it worked in that regard and it was more interesting. And I think two foot small, two foot tall, tall, such kind of a tease can be kind of tricky with a microphone. Uh, tease, bees, peas, pe pop, 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 popping peas. Holly, you know, you've sung on microphones. It's like, you know, I've got a pee popper, a popper stopper uh, that I put is basically nylon. <laughs> you can just, if you have old nylons, you can make your own. Um, and just, it, it keeps the air coming from your mouth to making this, the mic go pop. Um, and because that's hard to get rid of in a mix. So I hear it every now and then. I, you know, on old recordings, you can hear it definitely. So take the basic chord pattern A, C, D, G, and explain how some altered chords can change. The feel and complexity. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's A, C, like A major, C major, D major, G major. Basic chord pattern. Explain how some altered chords can change. Well, it's not. It's not bad. I think. I think I understand that. Let me. Let me. Uh, can I copy and paste this? I want to copy and paste it with your name in there, though. Give credit where credit's due. Okay, I see. 
Um, noted. Steve, I don't know if I'll do anything about that, but I noted it. I think I, I think I know what you I mean, I'm kind of have an idea what you're talking about. Okay, we're losing subscribers or followers. I, um, but we got up to 40, which is pretty cool. So we touched on 40 a couple times. So anyway, uh, next week, new song, new mystery song. And uh, I don't want you to keep guessing because if you guess it, Yes, yeah, it's not smoke on the water. Don't worry. <laughs> it's harder than that. So, okay. Anyway, God bless you, everybody. I'll see you. I'll see you next Monday, Lord willing. Um, and we'll uh, we'll try to have uh, we'll we'll have some fun. Okay. Take care. Bye bye.